If you're even a little bit superstitious, do what you need to in week 16 to bring a little extra luck your way. Because right now we're still waiting on word for several running backs on whether they will play this week. And not only that, but the schedule is gonna make setting a lineup difficult. One game on Thursday, two games on Saturday, and three games on Monday means that we may not be able to wait on some of that news. We may have to just set our lineups, keep our fingers crossed, and hope that good luck comes our way. Yo, what is going on, Headliner Nation? Kyle back with the Fantasy Headliners, and I have got my top 30 running back rankings, plus a few guys just on the outside looking in this week. We're gonna dive into the guys that you should have out there in your lineup. But as I mentioned in the intro, keep in mind that there are several guys that we still do not have word on on whether or not they will play this week. And we'll continue to monitor that. And if anything changes, we'll address it on Friday and even during our live show on Saturday. But make sure you're staying up to date on all the latest information so you set the best lineup possible. But for now, we're gonna hop into it and y'all already know who's gonna to be at the top Christian McCaffrey will be number one but who slides right in after him obviously we'd like a little bit better matchup for Christian McCaffrey this week going up against Baltimore allowing the 10th fewest rushing yards and fifth fewest fantasy points to the running back position but it doesn't matter what the matchup is. Christian McCaffrey is at number one. But number two, Kyron Williams, he definitely could be in for a big week. He continues to get a massive amount of volume, and he's putting up a ton of yards and scoring touchdowns along with it, averaging almost 20 fantasy points per game right now. And New Orleans defense is starting to slow down a little bit. They are currently ranked 25th against the run after being one of the top run teams earlier in the season. Kyron Williams has himself a pretty decent matchup on Thursday night football. Another defense that's seen a little bit of a decline stopping the run is going to be Jacksonville. At one point, they were ranked fifth against the run, and now they're down to 12th. Keep an eye on Rashad White this week. We already know he's putting up the volume. His efficiency has gotten a lot better over the last several weeks. Jacksonville could still end up being tough, but hopefully he finds a couple of big plays and the end zone for us. James Cook, of all people, just smacked around the Dallas defense. And now they're going to have to worry about trying to stop Raheem Mostert while also keeping an eye on Jalen Waddell, Devonta Chan, and of course, Tyreek Hill. Mostert has been scoring touchdowns like a madman this season. 20 total touchdowns on the season. He's been a top 24 running back 85% of the time. And Dallas's run defense has dropped to 19th on the season after last week. Mostert even if for some reason he doesn't see the type of volume numbers that we would like, scoring a touchdown is always going to be in play. And speaking of James Cook, now he's going to be getting a Los Angeles defense that is ranked 18th against the run, but is allowing the seventh most fantasy points to the running back position currently. We're going to want to keep an eye on this matchup this week. James Cook has looked outstanding over the last couple of weeks, finishing inside the top five both weeks. Can he do it again? If he does, he could be considered a league winner this year. Alvin Kamara against the LA Rams on Thursday night football. Now, my issue with Kamara is that he's seen a little bit of a dip in terms of targets as of recent, and that's really taken away a super solid ceiling that he's had all season long. And the Rams front is it's it's up and down against the run right now, currently ranked 14th, but they are allowing the fourth fewest fantasy points to the running back position. If we can get Alvin and Kamara upwards of double digit targets this week then he absolutely is going to find himself inside the top six but if he doesn't we could see his floor steadily decline I think we're getting ready to see the Derrick Henry farewell tour in Tennessee and because of that they're going to try to let him run wild now that they're out of playoff contention over the last couple of weeks and this is good a week as ever to start with that going up against Seattle ranked 25th against the run and allowing the fifth most fantasy points to the running back position. Jameer Gibbs is going to have a super tough matchup this week against Minnesota. They do a really great job on the front stopping the run but Jameer Gibbs is one of the most explosive running backs in all of football 
football right now. He averages more yards per carry than anybody else that has qualified. And because of that, he has the ability to break off those huge plays that can make fantasy floors even better than more of the running backs around him. Jameer Gibbs is also going to have an opportunity to help in the passing game and score a touchdown. He's the high upside play in this Lions offense right now, and they're going to be looking to clinch the division at Minnesota. Isaiah Pacheco at number nine could end up being a little bit higher, but I am worried there's going to be more of a split backfield this week as he works his way back from that injury. This is a really good matchup, though, and Pacheco runs hard. He has the ability to put together 10-yard runs better than almost any other running back in the league. So really, if he can average five yards per carry and we can still get him upwards of 15 carries, that should be more than enough, especially if he ends up finding the end zone and maybe helps with a couple of catches as well. I don't know how anybody can trust B. John Robinson this weekend. I even have him a little bit lower than the consensus right now, which has him inside the top eight this week. It is a great matchup against Indianapolis, currently allowing the third most fantasy points to the running back position and ranked 26 against the run right now as well. The opportunity is going to be there for a huge day, but will Arthur Smith get in our way? Let's hope not. Ezekiel Elliott at number 11. Now, I will say I do have him a lot higher than the consensus this week. I don't think Ramondre Stevenson plays because as of this recording, he hasn't even practiced as of yet. And Denver, who got lit up by the Lions on the ground last week, still boasts one of the worst run defenses in all of football, giving up the second most fantasy points on the season to the running back position and currently ranked 32nd against the run. Zeke could end up having another one of those big days to help carry us into a fantasy championship championship. For Joe Mixon at number 12, I don't really expect a huge fantasy day from him, especially in terms of his just volume output, but I definitely could see him finding the end zone at least one more time again this week, and of course helping out in the passing game a little bit as well. If Cincinnati can get a nice little lead on Pittsburgh, then Mixon could give you about 70 or 80 total yards and a touchdown, which would be good enough potentially to put him inside the top 12. Saquon Barkley going up against Philadelphia is going to have a tough matchup, but Kenneth Walker played really well last week against Philadelphia. And we know Saquon Barkley is going to end up getting the volume as well and will help in the passing game a little bit. It is Philadelphia, though. They're very good on the ground against the run. And maybe Matt Patricia will figure it out and we'll get the defense ready for this week. But if he doesn't, Barkley could definitely go higher than 13. Kenneth Walker not only had a really good game last week against Philadelphia, but he was the main back once again. Zach Charbonnet didn't even make a dent in Kenneth Walker's output. And because of that, going up against Tennessee, a defense that has kind of declined against the run over the last few weeks. If he gets that type of volume once again, he's definitely going to be worthy of a top 15 play. I know a lot of people are not going to trust Aaron Jones this week, and I absolutely get it. But A.J. Dillon has been banged up. Aaron Jones didn't look too bad last week, and now he gets a really crappy Carolina run defense to hopefully bust some big plays against. Let's keep our fingers crossed. We've held Aaron Jones all season long, and maybe this is the reason right here. DeAndre Swift had an okay, not great game last week in a really solid matchup, but this week now, going up against the New York Giants, it's going to be another decent matchup for him, but he's just not finding the end zone because, well, Jalen Hurts has been stealing those touchdowns for him. He's been close. He keeps getting tackled on the one or two yard line, taking one for the team so Jalen Hurts can get in with the tush push. But for fantasy owners, we need DeAndre Swift to stay on his feet those extra couple of yards and land in the end zone. Not only is there a chance that Tony Pollard at number 17 could be game scripted out against Miami, but Miami's run defense is really good as well. And that's going to present some problems for Tony Pollard to have a big day. Right now, Miami is ranked fourth against the run, allowing the ninth fewest fantasy points to the running back position. For me, Tony Pollard just doesn't have a ton of upside. Travis Etienne at number 18 is stumbling down the stretch run here. Now you could blame it on injuries. You could blame it on a tough schedule. You could blame it on a few different things. We know the big playability is there, but Tampa Bay ranked ninth against the run, allowing the eighth fewest fantasy points is not necessarily the matchup that I would be hoping for Tony Pollard to get 
in the semifinals of my championship run. For me, Travis Etienne, unfortunately, just doesn't have the upside that I would like this week. He's going to get the touches, but if he doesn't find the end zone, I don't know how he goes any higher than this. Chuba Hubbard at number 19 has been getting the volume, and he's been looking pretty good with that volume as well, and now he gets a really nice matchup going up against Green Bay. Am I hoping that Chuba Hubbard goes out and win me my fantasy week? Absolutely not. But my big hope is, is that he goes out and he just doesn't lose it for me. And he's got a safe enough floor to help with that right now. Jonathan Taylor looks like he is going to return this week. Earlier in the week when I did my start and sit video, there had still been no confirmation that he would try to play this week. Now that we're a couple of days past that, it is sounding like his plan is to suit up this Sunday against Atlanta. Keep in mind, as of this recording, he had not practiced on Wednesday, though, during their walkthrough. He did partake in it, but he hasn't padded up yet this week. That's going to be a a big factor of whether or not he's good to go on Sunday. If he does, I could definitely see him going a little bit higher, but I'm also going to be very cautious with it. Atlanta could be missing several guys in the middle of their defensive line, which would be good for Jonathan Taylor, but coming off the injury, I just want to make sure that I'm not overestimating my expectations. Josh Jacobs is another one that we're waiting to hear more about against Kansas City Monday afternoon. This might be one of those instances where if you have to play somebody over Josh Jacobs, you do it because you just don't know if he's going to be able to play this week or not. Definitely could see him being a little bit limited against Kansas City, especially if that Las Vegas defense is not able to shut them down. And because of that, he's going to have a much lower ceiling. Floor-wise, the volume should still be there. In number 22, Brees Hall against Washington is going to be a really good matchup, but Brees Hall has been super inconsistent this year. Are we going to get a top five Brees Hall, or are we going to get a guy that finishes outside the top 24? Oh my, Austin Eckler, you have fallen so so much and I would love to go a lot higher with you and technically I am higher than the ECR right now with Austin Eckler so if this ranking looks super low to you trust me the industry has them a lot lower than this Buffalo isn't the best matchup in the world but it is an opportunity hopefully with kind of a new game plan around him to get him moving once again but with a backup quarterback and injuries all around him how high does the ceiling actually go Steven Montgomery's been one of the safest running backs in all of football this year but going up against Minnesota if he doesn't score a touchdown I don't know how far he can make it inside the top 24 still a decent floor for me and I'm still willing to play him over a lot of other running backs that have a lot of risk but Minnesota does present a tough challenge for him to reach a higher ceiling Devonta Chan continues to be a little bit banged up, and whether or not that played a role in him not playing as well last week is yet to be seen. He is questionable right now for his matchup against Dallas Sunday afternoon, but a Chan definitely will still see a decent amount of touches to be considered a flex option this week, and if he can break a big play, he could go higher than that. Dante Foreman at 26 going up against Arizona is a great matchup, and I would love to go a lot higher with Dante Foreman, but the issue is... Well, we don't know how much touches Roshan Johnson might get. Now that Chicago is officially eliminated, is there any chance that maybe they say, we need to find out what we have in Roshan Johnson and give him way more touches than Foreman this week? Ty Chandler at number 27. Detroit's defense has been lackluster as of recent, played well against Denver, but they haven't been the same dominating force that we saw to begin the season, especially against the pass. But the run... They're still playing very well. And after last week, they're ranked number one against the run this year. And Ty Chandler, unfortunately, won't have a huge upside because of that. James Conner going up against Chicago. Chicago's run defense has been outstanding as of recent. James Conner does not help in the passing game. And because of that, he has a super low ceiling. Najee Harris has a good matchup against Cincinnati on Saturday. But since they fired Matt Canada, the offense hasn't exactly looked better, especially running the football. James Jalen Warren and Najee Harris continue to see a split in touches. Najee Harris seeing a majority of work on the ground, which is where he would excel this week if he could put together a couple of big plays. Devin Singletary at number 30 going up against Cleveland. Devin Singletary, definitely a lower ceiling, tough matchup. We'll have the volume though. So if you're looking for a flex option to throw in your lineup, hoping, hey, I'm going to keep my fingers crossed that he just doesn't lose my matchup, Devin Singletary could be that guy. 
because I definitely don't think he'll help you win it. All right, I do have a few guys just on the outside looking in. Javante Williams going up against New England is not the greatest matchup in the world. Williams has seen a decent amount of volume, but it does feel like Denver is throwing the ball way more often right now, and Javante just doesn't offer that type of upside. Jerome Ford's been banged up for a couple of weeks now, and Houston is not an easy matchup. If he's going to make any type of a fantasy impact for us, it would probably have to be through the air this week, or maybe he rips off a big play. Jalen Warren at number 33, kind of the same thing. Volume-wise, may not be exactly where we would like. When I talked about Najee Harris, Najee Harris is probably going to see more carries on the ground. But Jalen Warren is more explosive, and he continues to be more explosive and more efficient than Najee Harris could ever dream of being. So Jalen Warren, if you could get more touches, I would absolutely love it. Let's say if we gave Jalen Warren 18 total touches this week against Cincinnati, to me, he's a top 12 play but I just don't see that happening because Pittsburgh has changed their tune with the run game. Gus Edwards, he's going to be a guy with a really tough matchup, but is the lead back. If Baltimore can get in the red zone, he could score a touchdown or two. But volume-wise, just not going to be enough for him to be considered a high play with any type of a safe floor. Clyde Edwards-Alaire, I mentioned him already when I talked about Isaiah Pacheco. Could absolutely see CEH still seeing a decent amount of touches this week. If they are working Isaiah Pacheco back in a little bit slower than what we would like. And Brian Robinson at number 36, still right now questionable, had not practiced as of this recording. I'm assuming he's probably going to be out against the New York Jets. If he were to play for some reason, I do think he could be right around number 30 or anywhere in between 24 and 30, just outside the top 24 running backs. But if he doesn't play, Chris Rodriguez and Antonio Gibson will split the work. And really, I don't think either of them will be worth a shot. All right, Headliner Nation, there you have it. My week 16 running back rankings. I went through the top 30 and a few guys that just missed out. Hit that like button for me. Make sure you subscribe if you are new here. And if you are subscribed, but maybe your season's over with, don't go anywhere. Stick around. Maybe do an NFL playoff best ball league with us. Stick around as we talk about pick them throughout the playoffs, and you're not going to want to miss any of our offseason content. But for now, I'm going to get out of here. All of you stay safe and healthy, and I will catch you on the next episode of the Fantasy Headliners. I'm a headliner.